Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. For today's video, I want to cover a very exciting topic. Instead of talking about how you can make some gold in World of Warcraft, I want to talk about how people have been able to make real money playing the game. Before I start, it's important to note that gold, as many other online currencies, like the one in RuneScape, has a real value on the market. Remember, for instance, when in 2007, a woman offered to sleep with someone if the person was paying for epic flying mount, meaning 5,000 gold. Gold can even be worth more than national currency in some countries. For instance, in 2018 in Venezuela, the virtual gold in World of Warcraft was almost seven times more valuable than real cash from Venezuela. This meant that for many people, it was more interesting to farm and sell gold in WoW than actually doing their normal job. As a result, many people have found ways of profiting this video game and making a real living out of playing World of Warcraft. So what I'm going to do in today's video is explain what are all these different ways people have found and what are the ones that are technically legal and the ones that are technically illegal. Before I start, it's very important to insist on the fact that some of these activities are strictly against Blizzard's terms of services. So please do not try them because you might get your account banned. Let's start with what is probably the most obvious way people have been able to make a living playing World of Warcraft, and it is working for Blizzard. It's obvious, but when you are working for Blizzard, whether it is as a game developer or as a game master, you will play the game. And in exchange, you will get a salary and therefore make some money playing World of Warcraft. It is not really playing because you are still working, but I'm sure that many of you can argue that right now it is also the case for normal players. According to some data from 2022, Blizzard pays its employees an average of $97,000 a year. Salaries at Blizzard can range from anywhere between $59,000 to $144,000 a year. But of course, there are big gaps in salaries. And recently, after all the controversies and issues that Blizzard faced, it was shown that unfortunately many staffs were underpaid when other members of Blizzard were being paid absurd amount of money. For instance, Bobby Kotick was earning $154 million in 2020 only. So, while working for Blizzard will remain probably the easiest way to make some money playing WoW, it's important to acknowledge that with all the recent controversies, Blizzard is no really not well perceived and so for many people, they don't want to get associated with this company. And also many players just stop playing the games because of all these different issues and lawsuits. So, it's very difficult to say what will be the future of Blizzard and of its employees, but for now it will anyway remain probably the most like obvious way of making some real money with the game. Another obvious way people have been able to make real money playing World of Warcraft is competitive esports. As with many other video games, WoW offers some competitive esports services. Esports, also known as e-games or electronic sports, is basically organized competitive video game. It primarily involves teams competing against each other in tournaments for a cash prize. As of for now, it includes in World of Warcraft PvP with arenas and PvE with mythic dungeons. Since the beginning of the WoW esports, Blizzard rewarded all the winners from the 166 tournaments with more than $7 million in prize money. For instance, in 2019, the winners of the Arena World Championship won 130k, which means a little bit more than 30k per player. The second team won 66k, so 16k per player, and then it only goes lower and lower. So while it's definitely something players can do, and players can make a living with competitive uh, e-game, it's very difficult for many players to do it. So it's very restrictive and this is only something that the top players will be actually able to make some real money out of it. And so for most people, it will be something that you will maybe be able to profit a little bit, but definitely not something you will be able to make a living out of. Let's now talk about what could be one of the most profitable way of making real money playing the game. And it is content creation. Whether you are streaming the game on Twitch or on YouTube or creating videos and guides, 
you are creating content based on World of Warcraft and for some people it can result in making a lot of money. Of course, when talking about World of Warcraft content creators, many of you will automatically think about Asmongold. Overall, Asmongold's yearly earnings are estimated to be between 2.5 to 3 million dollars every year. This includes his earnings from the various social media platforms he's active on, along with other sponsorships, brand deals that he has signed. However, Asmon only represents the top creators. And unfortunately for many other content creators, it will be almost impossible to actually make a living based on the content you are creating. For many of these content creators, especially on YouTube and on Twitch, you will maybe earn on average $100 to $1,000 a month. If you take, for instance, one of the biggest WoW YouTubers, Nixium, it's estimated that he makes $7,000 dollars a month. Of course, this is not including probably like all the different sponsorship and brand deals is also signing. But still, Nixium he represents one of the biggest content creator on the platform. And so for him to only make 7,000 a month represents really how it's difficult to make a living making content on World of Warcraft. Another very popular world content creator, Uber Dunger, recently explained how he tried to make a living playing World of Warcraft, but even with his 1.4 million subscribers on YouTube, he wasn't able to actually make a living playing the game, especially when YouTube can decide to remove the ads from your video or restrict the access, which basically kills your video and your revenue at the same time. So while some people are able to make millions creating content on World of Warcraft, most people will probably not be able to make a living doing this, but this is always something you can do to make some extra money, like myself for instance. Let's now dive into what is probably going to be the most controversial way of making real money playing the game, and it is selling gold online. Before I start, I really want to insist here that selling gold for real money is strictly against the terms of services. So if you're doing it, you definitely take the risk of getting your account banned. Selling gold has always been the most common way of making real money playing World of Warcraft. Whether it is players individually farming gold and then selling it, or companies hiring people to farm gold in exchange for a salary, people have been able to make a lot of money just by farming and selling this gold. The most common example is from China. It is estimated that 80% of all gold farmers are in China and with the largest internet population in the world they are but to be 100,000 full-time gold farmers in the country. For instance, in 2007, the New York Times released an article explaining that some young Chinese men were paid for like farming more than 12 hours a night, seven nights a week, with only two or three nights off per month, and that was their living. And they were basically just farming gold and getting paid for it. In some cases, people have even been forced to farm gold, such as, for instance, in China, where prisoners were forced to play World of Warcraft. Indeed, it's been discovered that in an unknown number of Chinese prisons across the country, inmates have been forced not only to do physical labor, but electronic work as well, acting as World of Warcraft gold farmers by night. Prison bosses made more money forcing inmates to play games than they do forcing people to do manual labor. One of the Guardian explained that there were 300 prisoners forced to play games and that they worked 12 hour shifts in the camp and that basically all these different prisoners were making the equivalent of 700 to 900 a day but of course the money was not going to them but to the guards. To then sell the gold, individuals, companies will go on different websites specialized in selling online currencies and items where buyers can then come and order the gold directly from there. There are many different websites, uh, but I won't name any for obvious reasons. When going on these websites, it is estimated that currently a gold cap, meaning 10 million gold, is worth 650 USD on European realms and 850 USD on US realms. So for a lot of people, you are still able to make a decent living just farming gold in World of Warcraft. After that, we're gonna have another controversial method, and this is boosting. Boosting has always been one of the most common ways for people to make gold or real money in World of Warcraft. Boosting has recently been in the eye of the storm. 
After many players and content creators complained about the issues linked with boosting and how it affected the overall gameplay and the value of achieving things and doing activities in World of Warcraft. Until now, Blizzard was always clear that selling in-game items and services such as you know, carries or boosting for real money was not allowed, but that providing such services with gold was allowed. However, due to the recent controversies, Blizzard announced that as of today, we will now prohibit organizations who offer boosting, matchmaking, escrow, or other non-traditional services, including those offered for gold. World of Warcraft accounts found to be in violation of this policy are subject to account actions. These actions can include warnings, account suspensions, and if necessary, permanent closure of the disruptive World of Warcraft accounts. Organizations operating across multiple realms and excessively advertising non-traditional in-game sales are contrary to the terms and conditions of the Blizzard and user license agreement. This policy update does not restrict individuals or guilds from using the provided in-game tools such as the trade chat to buy or sell in-game items or activities for in-game currency. However, boosting communities like the ones you can find on Discord, especially those who operate across multiple realms, are no longer permitted. Still, even after a couple of months, this new uh, policy has been implemented, boosting is still very present in the game, and people still make tons of money providing these services. For instance, on some websites that I won't name, you can purchase Gladiator Boost for 700 euros at the moment. It's very difficult to provide a clear estimate of how much money or gold a booster can make, as it depends on the time you invest in uh, the boosting services, the quality of the boost, and also the level of organization of your community. But some people estimate that it can be anywhere from $4 an hour to $2,000 a month for an average booster. What booster do in order to actually make some real money doing these different services? The first thing is of course simply providing the services for real money. But of course this is something that is very risky and can get the entire account banned. Other communities offer these services for gold and then what they do is simply reselling the gold for real money on all the different platforms I just mentioned in the previous category. And again, this is something that is totally against TOS, so it's also very risky. So this is really the like best method people have been using in order to make some gold playing the game and definitely something that I think will remain part of the game for a long, long time. Let's now talk about a category I'm a little bit more familiar with, and this is selling flipping TCG items. The World of Warcraft trading card game is an out-of-print collectible card game based on World of Warcraft. Blizzard started to create these cards in 2006 and released different extensions up until 2014. With each extension came new sets of cards, including some loot cards which contain a scratch of code. This code can then be redeemed in the game for a virtual price, and these prices include pets, tabards, mounts, and other toys. It is then possible to either sell the loot card on websites such as, for instance, eBay in exchange of real money, or to redeem the, the item in game and sell it for gold. It's important to note that not all items are binds when equipped, so for some of them, if you redeem it in game, it will then be linked to your character. This was a good way for some people to make some extra gold or real money when buying these different packs up until August 2013, when Blizzard decided to stop uh, the production of these different cards. As a result, no more loot code have been created since then, and as you can imagine, the rarity and value of these items have only increased year after year since that moment. No, some of these items, such as the Spectral Tiger Mount, can be worth more than $8,000. So many people make a lot of money with these different items. The best technique they are using is very simple. First, you want to purchase some of the codes on the website WoTCG Loot, a website where people sell their cards and then the website resell the codes. Or you can also simply purchase the cards directly on eBay. Then what they do is they go on different platforms such as Discord to resell the mount for gold. Then, once they get the gold, they resell the gold for real money on some of the platforms I mentioned previously, and then use this money to buy more codes and more mounts. And like that, they are then able to resell these mounts for even more, and it's just a circle where they buy more, sell more, buy more, and sell more. And so, 
This is something I know for a fact that some people have been able to make a lot of money with. I know that some people have been able to make more than 4 5k a month doing these different trades. Uh, it's important to notice again that while it's legal to sell the cards and codes for real money or to sell in-game items for gold, it's against the terms or services to sell these items in-game for real money. Let's say that for instance you already redeemed the Spectral Tiger in the game, you can only sell it normally for gold. You are not normally able to sell it for real money and if you do it, you can be banned. So very important to keep in mind for this category. But it's very important to emphasize the fact that with the recent announcement from Blizzard that one of the very rare mounts from the TCG cards, the Feldrake, will be part of a Twitch drop and that basically everyone that watches a few hours of streaming on Twitch will be able to get the mount for free. There is kind of a panicking movement within the TCG community and unfortunately I think the goal of Blizzard by doing so is to really affect this market and to also just reuse all these different assets in order to profit from these assets that uh, they have created a long time ago. And even right now on the website WoTCG Loot, they actually removed all the different digital codes that you could previously buy. So I'm not sure what will happen with this market, but for sure it won't be as profitable as before because people won't be confident in purchasing this type of items knowing that maybe in the future Blizzard will just reintroduce them into the game one way or another. Let's now talk about another interesting category. One thing players have been doing since Bania War is selling their icons and characters for real money. Some do it simply because they decide to stop playing the game and want to refund the amount of time they invest in the game. Others simply want to make money. You can usually find these sales on eBay or on other platforms and the price will value a lot from one icon to another. For instance, if you have rare or removed from the game items such as like weapons, uh, I'm thinking about, for instance, the Corrupted Ashbringer or rare mounts such as Gladiator mounts, the, the value of your icons will increase a lot. What many players do is that, for instance, they will get Gladiator on a new icon and then resell it. And then they will do it again and again with other icons. A lot of people also buy and sell icons, kind of for a living. For instance, this person explained how he was making over 100,000 dollars a year selling World of Warcraft characters. It's important to mention that this is strictly against TOS, and if Blizzard notices that the account has been sold, they will close it forever. Blizzard does not recognize the transfer of World of Warcraft accounts or Battle.net accounts. You may not purchase, sell, gift or trade any accounts or offer to purchase, sell, gift or trade any account, and any such item shall be null and void. It's especially risky for the buyer as the seller could reclaim the account at any moment or it could be banned at any moment. So it's a lot more risky for the buyer than from the seller. A good example of this comes from Zuzo. Zuzo was a rogue from the guild method and in 2007 he sold his account for 7000 euros. His gear at the time included some of the best gears you could think of including, for instance, the Twin Blades of Azinot, almost a full tier 6 and many other interesting items. But the account was banned very very soon after the sale happened, simply because Blizzard realized that it was strange that one of the top players at the time was actually pretty bad, and they then made a little bit of research and realized that the account has been sold, and then they decided to ban it. Let's now talk about the last item on this list, and it is going to BlizzCon. BlizzCon is an annual convention hosted by Blizzard in Southern California. During this event, Blizzard holds numerous panels revealing their upcoming titles and newest game content, displaying art, hosting live tournaments, putting out playable demos, and much more. Since the first BlizzCon in 2005, thousands of Blizzard fans met in California to learn more about their favorite games. The cost of the ticket, which varies each year, grants attendees entry to the convention hall for the duration of the event and an exclusive goodie bag, which often contains things such as in-game rewards for the games, beta keys for upcoming Blizzard titles and other exclusive Blizzard items. 
Since the amount of tickets is limited, dates for the ticket sales are announced month in advance. And on sale day, the tickets are often sold out within the first few hours. As these items are limited and only available for a short period of time, people will purchase multiple of these tickets to get a maximum of these codes and then wait months for even years to then resell these items for real money or gold. But anyway, even if they sell it for gold, they can then resell the gold for real money as we have seen before. So these items can therefore be worth a lot of money and this is a real business for a lot of fans. Some good examples of these very expensive items include for instance the blue Moloch egg. It is a pet that you could get when participating into the first BlizzCon in 2005. You can now sell it for up to $8,000, uh, so it's really a lot. Other very popular items include for instance the big blizzard bear. This one can still be sold for like around $500. And even the two mods that you could get during the 2017 BlizzCon can now be sold for on average $285. So this is really something that people still do and something that I'm sure people will still be able to make some money out of. So we are done with this list. I would love to know what you think personally about people making real money uh, with World of Warcraft and what you think about all these different activities. I would also love to know if you enjoy the video and the, if this type of content is something you would like me to do a little bit more or not. I will be back very, very soon with more videos on how you can simply make some gold in World of Warcraft and also I will try to cover other interesting topics. But in the meantime, I wish you all a very, very good weekend and I hope to see you all very soon for another video. Bye!